Hello, I'm Rico Cavellia, and this is your Ageless Body Self-Care Guide. Operations Manual for your body and for your mind. And today's session is entitled Hydration. Now, this is really an important uh, topic because, you know, I, I just recently checked and it's, it, studies have shown that up to 75% of Americans are dehydrated. So, and that's not a condition really that's going to serve you for optimal health or well-being. So you, this is going to be a real important one you want to really pay attention to. And we're really fortunate to have the really the perfect person uh, as our expert and teacher today. Her name is Gina Bria, and she's an anthropologist, a health researcher, an author, and a co-founder of the Hydration Foundation. And she is a founding member of the Worldwide Water and Health Association. So Gina, Bria, thanks so much for being here. Oh, this is a delight. And boy, am I going to surprise your listeners. <laughs> I know you are. This is, this is such a great topic. And uh, so, you know, on your website, I, I like this. I, I took this off your website. You say, hydration is the most potent, simple, affordable act we can do to improve everything. We are bodies of water and we live on a water planet. With, re with reverence for water, we heal our bodies and our planet. So let's talk about that a little bit. Talk, ex expand on that. Well, uh, the first thing I want to share is that we are far more water We're, as water beings. We are far more made up of water than we have ever recognized before. So that's important. We'll talk about that. Rico, thank you so much for you know, giving me this opportunity to, to really improve people's hydration. Um, the second thing we want to share is that um, the way we've been going about hydration is really a, um, a, bro a broken system. So trying to guzzle eight glasses a day is actually not the way to hydrate. It's not the traditional way to hydrate. It's the way we've been told um, that we really need to expand our concept of where we get hydrated from. So uh, just sticking with liquid hydration is a real problem and we're gonna talk about that today. And then finally, um, why your personal hydration is a contribution to all of our ecological crises and how just being a better hydrated person is going to be part of the chain of healing as we need such profound healing, both ourselves and our world. Wow, that sounds so great. Yeah. <laughs> all right. So how about just start off with uh, really what is hydration? Yeah. How, how do you de define that and, and uh, maybe talk a little bit about what uh, water does biologically, uh, biologically right. in our bodies? Right. So we're used to thinking water as what moistens us and we don't really recognize that water is actually an energy source. It is the gas that the body runs on, if I can put it that way. And, um, and it's, it's also not just coming in a liquid form, which is how we think of getting, you know, more gas in our body, guzzle more and more water. And that's the idea that's been put forth um, since maybe the late 40s, um, uh, looking at water simply as a volume mechanism, like get enough of that water in you and then somehow it does all its work. But actually water is um, the most important quality of water is its ability to conduct electrical function in the body. So we all know water conducts electricity, right? We're used to thinking of that. We just haven't really thought about that as a mechanism inside ourselves. Mm -hmm. And the best form of water to conduct electricity is not liquid, it's a, it's a more gel, a slightly more viscous form. Uh, we know that from EKGs where they put, they'll put a, a gel on you to help mm -hmm. conduct the electrical readings through your body. We have the science that helps us understand that water is in different forms. It's vapor, liquid, gel, a jelly-like form, and ice. And the jelly-like form is actually what is the kind of water that's inside of us, inside of our cells. And that's what the body's busy trying to convert um, liquid water into a, a, a thicker form, a more concentrated form. And that's the water that really runs us well. So we want to activate our body's ability to convert that water into a slightly more dense form. And throwing all that liquid in our body actually dilutes that process. So mm -hmm. surprise, the best place to get water is, nat is the way nature has already packaged it. And that's in food form. 
So great foods like um, watermelon, of course, <laughs> apples, surprisingly leafy greens are 98% of this slightly thicker water, which conducts water at a more electrical heightened form. That means that eating your water, eating more of your water is going to be, a, our high plant diet is going to be a really smart way to get way better hydration than guzzling all of that water that we're doing. By the wow. way, that tap water and that bottled water has lost through the way we process it, it's electrical charge. So you're actually drinking water that doesn't have any kind of um, electrical or electron ability to help our cells fire and signal to do the work that it needs to do. So this well, is big news. This is big news. That is big news and really interesting because what I've always learned in the past, you know, people would say that, uh, you know, just drinking pure water you know, hydrates you best because it doesn't need to be digested. It goes right into the cells. But, mm -hmm. you know, when you drink like tea or coconut water or something right. like that, any, anytime you put anything in the water, then it has to go through the, through the digestive system. So, so talk about that a little bit. So water's more sophisticated than that. That's a very mechanical approach. But water has um, these capacities for signaling. It's got an electromagnetic current to it. And therefore, it passes into the cells as signals, not just as molecules. It does pass into the cells as molecules, but our understanding about water is very, very limited. And how I stumbled into this, Rico, is I was really researching um, communities, desert communities, and how they hydrated. And by the way, why weren't they dead without eight glasses of water a day? Like wh what? <laughs> yeah. They don't have liquid forms. So I wanted to answer the question, why, you know, how were they hydrating? And I was so surprised to find out they weren't using liquid, they were using plants. They were using cactus and aloe and tubers and fruits and dates and um, even something like, um, uh, the viscosity of these plants had the extra charge in it because in the desert uh, environment, the plants had already figured out how to take the sun and concentrate the water. So you'll see this jelly-like form of water in something like aloe. Um, one of my favorite ways to, if you're not around aloe or cactuses normally, um, is to use chia seed, which was a widely used way to hydrate um, all through Latin America. And by the way, in California, it was a native plant. And so um, chia seeds are widely available now. They weren't when I first started this research work, but they were the first thing I sent to the lab at the University of Washington, working with Dr. Gerald Pollack, who had discovered this gel form of water and how important it was that it was doing different work than liquid, more conductive work. And I sent him, he was using, um, Nathion, a chemical form of, uh, of co condensed, uh, of material that c conducts electricity. And I said, I bet the plants do the same thing that your chemicals, your science chemicals from the lab store do. Why don't you test the chia seed? Because I think this one is a really high powered plant. And um, he did actually confirm that the chia seed and the, the gel that it releases when it touches liquid is of course this more concentrated form of water. And therefore, when we get that kind of food in our diet, our hydration levels really change very quickly. Now, why that's so important is, our, it is our gas, it's our fuel. It's also our electromagnetic cell signaling coordinator. So water in the body, the right kind of water in the body actually organizes all the functions of that your cells are signaling. It helps orchestrate and conduct clear messaging. So your capacity for healing and longevity changes when you get the right kind of hydration. And of course, if we look at blue zones all over the world, we see that they are hydrating differently than we are. They're not guzzling eight bottles of water a day. They're eating a lots of plants that have this extra charge in the water that's inside the plants. Wow, that's so good to know. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's, that's such great information. Gina, I really appreciate that. Uh, yeah, well, before we get into, I want to talk a little bit more about the chia seeds. You know, I've been yeah. reading about that too. And we, mm -hmm. we always knew that they, they had some really uh, uh, nutritional qualities, but not so much known as far as the water type thing and how it can create 
structured water. But before we get into all those different kind of waters, just to, to talk just a little bit about what problems really arise when you when you are dehydrated. Well, if your cell is made of water, which it is, it's a it's this gel-like form of water inside the cell, and how that works is the the, that plasma form, the thicker, uh, not the liquidy form, but the slightly thicker form of water is what allows functionally the proteins to fold and unfold. So all your cell function, your, your, your muscles and their ability to react quickly, your cognition and your ability to um, be resilient in your thinking, your mood, your, all of these things are run on hydration. They're not run on anything else. We mostly think they're run on nutrition, but actually water is what dissembles the nutrients and allows them to be bioavailable. So if you don't have that water to do all this kind of work where it's literally taking apart the nutrition molecules, uh, changing them into electrical signals, sending them into your system to do their work, um, you're taking supplements for no good reason. You know, you're taking a great diet without understanding that water is the master uh, who opens the door to all that nutrition doing its work, to all the function of the cell doing its work, to the clarity of your mind and your mood, all of this. We're water beings. We're made of water. So. Wow. So how can people uh, know if, if they're getting proper hydration or not? What are some well, of them? I love to I love to ask people: Are you irritable and crabby, and do you have a despairing <laughs> view of life? <laughs> yeah. Do you think you're just going downhill? You know, do you are you facing aging as an inevitable decline? Mm -hmm. That's simply the dehydration. I mean, the ultimate dehydration. I'm going to be really blunt here: is death, mm -hmm. right? And so, keeping ourselves well hydrated until the moment that plug is pulled on us allows us to have a very different experience of aging. And this is the message that's missing in the medical community. And it's why I wrote a book called Quench with a medical, an, an integrative physician, because I knew nobody was going to listen. Who's going to listen to an anthropologist, Rico? Even though I was coming with this extraordinary information about how desert communities, their longevity, their clarity of thinking, their joy in life, their ability to be in motion and live a day was completely different because of the kind of water they were getting access to. So I'm very excited that I get to share this with your listeners and I get to share this with yeah. you and to think differently about how we're gonna age really requires a new way to think about hydration. Yeah, I, I really appreciate this. I, I really appreciate this, such great information, Gina. Again, I wanna thank you for your great work. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. just so important. Well, we, before we talk, in, before we go into what are all the types of, of plants and, and ways to get the best type of water in your body, but, but let's do still go over basic water. And we're still gonna drink some basic water, right? right. So, yeah. so so what kind of water do you, just regular water, uh, do you recommend people to, should right. be drinking? Right, right. So I don't wanna get talk people out of using water right. in their yeah. life. Um, because the water does use liquid, the body does use liquid water to transform into gel water. But I wanna make it easier for our bodies and to help people shift to realize they need to get more water from plants. Right. And this is literally how nature has packaged water for our animal use. <laughs> yeah. You know, you see when you watch what animals in the wild, they aren't guzzling water. They're also grazing, they're also eating a lot of fruits. Mm -hmm. So water is part of the chain, but it's not the whole chain. And we're missing the rest of the chain in our conversation about water and partly the the part of that problem rico is that the water that we get from tap and bottles has been very compromised as well it's yeah. lost its electrical charge so um we need to be careful the kind of water that we ingest or we need to take some action on it to restore it because it's literally been interfered with by water treatment to make you know we wanted to make water um uh, decontaminated and we, we chose the pathway of throwing chemicals at it. So we wash all our water. Nature takes time and soil 
and sunlight to, re to decontaminate water. It's got its own system that's much longer and more gentle and is actually re then recovers water, not only from contamination, but keeps it well charged. But we don't do that. We throw those chemicals at it, then we shove it in a pipe. And of course, water needs to spiral to really get in motion to do part of this cleaning work for itself and to change its state from just liquid to a slightly more viscous concentrated form. And when we put water through narrow pipes, there's not enough room for that water to spin. So there's multiple things going on that are taking down our water's ability to give us what it is supposed to be doing for us. So we have to recover that. And there's, I, I'm gonna share such simple ways to recover it, you're just gonna be so surprised. So don't ever drink a, a glass of water from the tap or bottle again, naked. Remember, you gotta do something to it. Mm -hmm. So you, the things you can do to it are so simple. You can put a pinch of good salt, like a sea salt or a Celtic salt in your bottle or in your glass of water. So simple. But what happens is that salts are carrying those electrical charges. Mm -hmm. They're minerals and they, they start talking to the water molecule and they get an, a, a molecular spin going. So the water starts to recover its charge. When you, um, for example, coconut water, you talked about the sort of idea that people think, um, oh, you should only drink pure water, um, but nature doesn't do that, right? So coconut water actually is more hydrating than bottled water. We have now tested this. It's amazing. But we have found out that its electrical conduction goes way down when we treat waters in the way we treat water. But we ourselves can recover water and we can do it by expanding where we think about water. When you do use tap or bottled water, make sure you put a little salt in it or, or um, you can throw in a, a cap full of apple cider vinegar or you can mix in a spoonful of honey or you can put a tea bag in there or you can cut up, you can just go straight to an apple. All of these ways are ways to additionally add to the water that we're recovering. We, that's our job. I thought about adding some little trace, I have this little drops of trace minerals. That, that A beautiful, water. Yeah. great strategy, great strategy. And of course, because our soils are so mineral deficient, you're doing yourself a favor by adding to your hydration, the minerals that are missing from our foods. So all of these things then start to work together to make our longevity look very different. So what about all the other uh, the, uh, the ways that we filter water? Is, is that good, mm -hmm. like, like reverse osmosis and all this? Right. Uh, yeah. so, so we should drink filtered water and then right. add, the, add the... Right. I get a lot of questions about this. So yeah. um, uh, drinking filtered water is, you know, our waters are very, very interfered with and contaminated. Um, and there's many ways to go about recovering that. And this is what I was saying about your personal hydration is part of water's recovery on this planet. Mm -hmm. This is how you're helping Mother Nature. Not only does it get you... A better body but we've got to help water we really do so uh, reverse osmosis is a very expensive form of cleaning the water um, it doesn't get you the electrical charge because it takes out all the minerals so if you are if you have that system in your life then you want to make sure you you add some kind of mineral to your water at the end um, or if you're drinking you know that water is compromised from it, it's clean but it it's, um, it's actually dehydrating to the body. You know, it's so sterilized that your body has to now take the minerals inside itself and go add it to the water that's coming in. Mm -hmm. So you're actually diluting the value of the water you're trying, the very kind of water you're trying to go to. And it's why you can often find people like the taste, but eventually they don't really notice a big hydration difference. So just help it along, give it some, you know, eat a beautiful diet, have some soup that day, you know, just compromise, you know, find your, your balance somewhere. So what type of water do you, do you actually drink yourself? Well, um, I, I drink a lot of teas. Mm -hmm. I drink coffee. I love coffee. Mm -hmm. um, I add things to those to stack that charge to bring more and more value to whatever it is I'm drinking. So I love using chia seeds. I especially like hydrating with chia pudding, <laughs> which surprises people because they're used to thinking of hydration as liquid, right? Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, can of coconut milk plus five tablespoons of chia seeds. Five, I always remember five because you have five fingers. 
So simple. You make that, stir it up, and uh, maybe put a little bit of honey on it or a little jam. And oh, it is a real solution for especially the elderly who are struggling with getting enough hydration and also trying to deal with incontinence issues or with uh, having to get up in the middle of the night and pee. You know, if you're not using those, that liquid form, you're using this very gentle time release kind of water that nature intended, you get yourself through the night in a completely different way and your hydration changes. That's awesome. So I've heard that chia seeds actually make the water uh, structured water. So I talk about what is structured water. Yeah, so structured water is simply water that's gone through this just slight shift from liquid into this more viscous state. And you may not even, you, if, you're, if you're drinking a glass of water with a pinch of pink salt in it, you're not gonna notice a salty taste. You're just gonna notice it's slightly more silky. Mm -hmm. And that means the electrical charge has started. And uh, again, something like bone broth, again, the superb form of structured water. So structured water is just a way to talk about how the molecules are reorganizing to uh, to get closer to each other and share their electrical charge. And that's structured water, simply water that now has some kind of charge to it that actually ups our electrical function. Very so. good. What about alkaline water? You know how alkaline water got so popular in all these machines. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah. So alkaline water is just one characteristic of water. And this is our society. We like to try to take things apart. We're a take apart society. Yeah. And we then we go from the take it apart to pick the best part <laughs> and just use that part. Get yeah. the 100% solution. Yeah. I want the 100% one button that I can push. Right. It's not, that's, <laughs> that's not a living system. Right. So um, you want water that has um, you know, more than just alkalinity. Um, that's why I really, I really move people towards foods. I can't even tell you everything that's in a beautiful um, cucumber. You know, I don't know what's all in there. Uh, it's, it's a completed system that nature has completed. And yeah. it's got so much more than alkalizing going on. So we don't want to fall for the one note solution, right. like the purest water, the best water. Right. What you want to do is have a diversity of waters in your life. And that's in, that includes a, a beautifully stretched out <clears throat> diet that matches the season. So when the peaches come in, oh man, you know you're <laughs> having peaches. You know when that's the when those uh, when the basil hits. Oh, basil is uh, revered around the world. It's profound hydrating food. People don't think about it. So having um, a pesto salad of some kind where you're putting, I've even made, believe it or not, I've made peaches pesto salad. It's yeah. unbelievably yeah. good. Yeah. Well, I think the point is here, you, you can't, we can't beat mother nature, right? You can't be, you join her. <laughs> yeah, She's no, way yeah, more yeah, fun yeah, than going to the store <laughs> and buying alkaline water for three right. or $4 a yeah. shot, hauling all that home, right. trying to, you know, get yourself safe, that safety message that now I have enough water. I have the right kind of water. I'm this, well, I'm trying to move you out of that fear and go into the abundance of nature. That's always there to support us because we're her living creatures. We're part of the living system. So this is crazy the way we go about solving things, isolating ourselves and getting into fear. Um, eat beautifully, eat widely, look for the luscious thing that's calling your attention and trust that there's, there is profound water in there, plus nutrition, packaged by nature, delivered at the right season. I mean, come on, <laughs> get in that glorious state and your yeah. longevity will be very different. Creekle, there's so, one. Oh, yeah, go ahead. Sorry. No, I was just going to say, that's, that's good information. I just want to add one quick thing, too, mm -hmm. about drinking, you know, this highly, because uh, water is naturally alkaline anyway, you know, it's yes. like, like around seven point something. But yeah. so when you make, when you buy this alkaline water, that's made, they take it right. away all the way up. Yeah. You definitely don't want to be drinking that with a meal because, you know, you, you need the acid inside your stomach to digest. Exactly. Okay. So if you're drinking a bunch of alkaline water, you're right. going to dilute the acid in your stomach and it's going to, right. it's going to contribute to poor digestion. So you don't want that to. That is a great point. And the, it, it points to the larger system, which is, you know, nature's on a roll. It is, it, it uses alkaline, it uses acid, and you don't want to just decide I'm picking one thing and I'm picking the high point and sticking with that. That's, that's, there's value to 
rest and release. There's value to low points. There's, you know, we're on a living system that rolls through all states of being and each one has its place. So even grief, <laughs> even grief has the appropriate place in our life. And we need to just ride our life differently, to sail it and not try to just stay close to shore where everything is safe. That's so well said. That's so good. Yeah, yeah everything in our life is, is there for a reason, isn't it? Everything yeah. is there. It's, it's all about a learning process. Well, I'm going to remind people that uh, you definitely want to go to, uh, you know, check out the PDF that comes with this uh, training video. Uh, then you'll get all of uh, uh, Gina's contact information and, and you'll, you definitely want to go to her website, hydrationfoundation.org. It's got so much more information on there. You can really learn a lot of stuff. You'll get a lot of really good information. So you definitely want to want to do that. So Gina, that's been so great. Uh, how about uh, if we could just give a couple? Well, before I ask you to give us just a, a quick little summary, you know, a quick little basic few things people should start doing right now. Right. I want to ask you, yeah, what ideas have you? Do you have? How can we get people? To, how, how can we get people to to stop? Well, first manufacturing and, and distributing, you know, these water right. bottles, which are causing yeah. such a, a pollution right. problem in the world. Yes. Well, here again, we're back to the question or back to the uh, statement I made, which is your personal hydration is part of the global solution. So stop mm -hmm. buying water bottles. Yeah. Just absolutely. don't do it. Yeah. Don't, don't, you don't need it. And, um, and, uh, you know, go buy apples from an organic farmer. Yeah. You know, um, that cost difference is your contribution to the, our Mother Earth who desperately needs our help right now. I don't want you to think about it as, well, that affects, that is costly to me. I want you to think about, I get to make a change and I get to contribute here. And yeah. boy, my generation is going to do it. So if it's an extra five bucks, here I am, have it. If you're on a limited budget, um, there are so many ways that you can so easily bring up your own personal hydration without extra cost. You know, the salt idea is really important. So a good quality salt will last you, you pay $12, it will last you nine months. Um, it's urgent that you start making your water slightly like a very diluted saline. Those couple pinches of salt in your glass of water and I'm just talking, and don't worry about the sodium issue. I already did it all the work for you. I did all the calculations. Even if you're on a low sodium diet, this will not put you over. It's under 1500, so don't worry about that. But what you're doing is literally, when you go to the hospital in crisis state of dehydration, what do they do? They put you on saline. That's the first thing they do. So this is a mild, ongoing, everyday way to intervene and help yourself with saline. And we have the studies which show that a water with salt in it, a glass of water with salt in it is two thirds more hydrating than water without. So we know you drink less, you don't have to pee all the time, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> and you get way better hydrated. Your electrical function goes up, which means your brain and your mood changes. And that's really, really important. So, um, I, I think the best way to really help people think about this is if I just kind of go through a day with you and show you what a day could look like that's different. Okay. And one of the ways that I can help uh, that preface this is by saying one of the underrated and misunderstood uh, uh, hydration strategies is movement. Because we guzzle all the water, that's all they ever tell you to do. They don't tell you that your body needs to then distribute that hydration. And it's using its tissue osmosis by your motion to deliver the moisture and the water and the electrical function all the way to your fingertips, through your joints, to your feet, to your knees. And now I get to tell you that the second half of hydration is movement, mm. but gentle movement. We're not talking about um, the hour of exercise. We're talking about moving through your day with slightly more movement than you would surprise yourself with. Um, yeah, so now yeah. that I've set that stage, let me walk you through what a day would look like. Okay. So why I wanted to preface that is when you wake up in the morning, you're in bed and you're nicely warmed by your sleep. 
and your spinal fluid, your spinal canal fluid, all the fluids in your tissue are beautifully warmed up from that bedtime sleep. And they've also collected all the waste of the night, which is when our whole body, especially our brain does its sanitation. Mm -hmm. So you're now in a waste removal system and understanding that means you know you have to move a little bit with that warm water. So right while you're laying in bed, before you ever do anything else, you just simply can put your head, your chin, your head moves down to your chest. Just move your, touch your chin to your chest or get as close as you can, and then move it back up just two or three times. So simple. What you've just done is a whole pressurized flush of your synovial canal. Mm. And you've just pressed out all that water out to the nodes that are gonna collect it and get it out through your limb system. I can't think of a more profound act of hydrating strategy for longevity and smart brain, smart tissue. Then you can wiggle your fingers, move your elbows around. I really like to massage my mattress with my shoulder blades. I'm doing this before I even get out from underneath the covers. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. And you just wiggle a little bit, move your bones, move your joints. And what you're doing is flushing out the waste that's accumulated and drawing in new, new hydration. So you're going to want to get up after a little wiggle in your bed and a few chest pumps. And you're going to want to go to your uh, morning routine of having your hot liquid, whether it's tea or coffee, and you're just going to add an extra glass of water there, usually warm. So I have my coffee. No one's going to interfere with me and my coffee first thing in the morning. I'm sorry. But after I have my coffee, I have a glass of warm water with a little bit of salt in it, or I might that day choose a lemon, or I might that day choose uh, apple cider vinegar. And through the week, I cycle through all of these strategies. And um, and so I've already added two huge stra hydration strategies to begin my day, which is simply adding an extra cup of warm water and sipping that through the morning. By um, 11 or 12, I might want to make a smoothie. And that's brilliant hydration strategy because you're throwing all those plants into one place, blending it, making it more uh, surface tension available. You're making more of that nutrition available. And I'll have, uh, uh, I used to drink a lot more smoothies, but I've gotten so hydrated and so new, nutri new, full of nutrients that I find I only need like a cup of a smoothie now instead of that quart. So you're going to want to adjust that for where you are in your life. And if you don't make smoothies and you don't like smoothies, you can just take a little chia seed at that point and put it in a juice. So pomegranate juice is brilliant. With a teaspoon or a tablespoon, you're gonna find your own level and your own like, your own preference of chia seed is, is an instant smoothie that is so hydrating and will time release hydration throughout your body for the rest of the day. Come on, that's astounding. So then if I'm having a pizza that day, I'm going to add a salad. I'm going to compensate for whatever drying foods I'm eating. You know, if I'm having a chicken breast, chicken breast is very unhydrating. <laughs> There's nothing there, you know. Mm -hmm. I'm going to I'm going to add a salad to that or cut up some peaches or make sure I have um, you know, some melon with that beautiful um, green melon, uh, that honeydew melon with a little bit of um, again, two basil leaves. Oh my gosh, we're talking about the joy of, of, you know, paddling through what's available and what's delicious and what's going to bring you joy. And then throughout the day, while I'm, um, for example, I'm chopping that melon, I'm going to think about, wait, I want to, I want to make sure I get my elbows up somehow. So I'm chopping and I'm just kind of dancing while I'm chopping. For women, especially every day, I tell them, get, just make sure you get your hands above your head. Get your elbows up by your ears because that's a drainage system we're not activating. Who tells you to do this during the day? This is all tissue draining, especially around the breast and the breast tissue. We don't ever do that. So get your, just make, just do that gesture a couple times during the day. If I'm on the phone, I'll stand at a doorway with my arm above me. My phone's in one hand, my arm's above me, and I'm just kind of <laughs> twisting. 
So twisting is a very important part of squeezing tissue, squeezing out old waste. And when you release, it draws in the fresh hydration. So I always make sure I get my chin over my shoulder. Mm -hmm. I do a few spinal twists while I'm you know, getting ready to sit down at my computer. I'm just activating this all day long, which is what longevity traditions do. They are in motion. Yeah, very good. Gentle motion. Gina, that was so amazing and so <laughs> awesome, awesome and so helpful for people. So I think you've already summed it all up. So I, now I just want to always remind our, our viewers that knowledge without action is useless right mm -hmm. so you've got to take action on it and i again i just completely encourage you to you know stay connected to all of our experts and go to their yes. websites and and check out all the great information they have to offer with you that they have to offer to you and uh again i promise you that if you follow these recommendations that all of our great experts have are giving you especially what gina did today was so good you're your overall health and well-being is, is going to be greatly improved. I, I promise you that's the truth. So, Gina, once again, thank you. That was fantastic. It was so good. I learned a lot. My, I learned a lot myself here today as well. So, uh, again, you just got to take action. Just got to get up and, and, and do it. So, thanks very much for, for being here. Thank you. Appreciate it, Rico.